chromatograms should reflect the separation of analyte peaks as accurately as possible baseline anomalies not only affect data presentation but can also lead to problems with identification and quantification of the analytes baseline problems includes noise wandering drip ghost peaks and negative peaks so these symptoms can have both mechanical and chemical origins hi bhaskar here and this video is going to highlight some of the important tips uh, some of the important tips that you can apply in your lab to reduce or completely remove these anomalies so let us begin our talk with the point number 1 where we are going to discuss about the uv detector and how the flow cell and its lamp can result into a baseline baseline noise the first point is the air bubble inside the flow cell it is important to degas both aqueous and organic mobile phases for gradient operation i mean you must also degas the mobile phase even for the isocritic operation too but it becomes very critical when it comes to a gradient evolution operation inadequate degassing of the mobile phase can cause air bubbles to form inside the flow cell since the high pressure that keeps bubbles or the air bubbles moving at the front of the column is actually can get trapped or release inside the flow cell for that reason degassing the mobile phase is very important in case if your air bubble is not getting removed off you can flush the flow cell by using water followed by methanol the reverse flushing of the flow cell is also a good idea where you can just reverse the connection of the flow cell and you can change the direction of the solvent coming inside the flow cell the second important point is the lamp energy a weak lamp can be source of short term noise and wandering baselines so after you correct any problems with the flow cell i mean you are going to reinstall it and perform a lamp intensity test by following the manufacturer's recommended procedures or even if you are using this lamp for a good period of time you may be checking the performance of the lamp as a part of your calibration uh, studies so assess a drifting baseline with and without flow to see if the rest of the system is contributing to the clearly visible flow cell or detector problems replace the lamp if required both deuterium and tungsten if really necessary so the third point is a uh, contaminated flow cell so reverse uh, the flow cell by altering connection and flush the flow cell with a strong solvent i mean this trick can also be used to even remove the trapped air bubble but if drip is not removed of sorry if the dirt is not removed of completely then cleaning the flow cell with one normal nitric acid under the experts advice can be carried out but be very careful while using the nitric acid for flushing off your flow cell you can also think of cleaning the flow cell from the outer surfaces with the solvent like methanol make sure that the surface of the flow cell is not opaque the second point is pump mobile phase and mixer the first point is pump pressure pulsations so baseline wander is also caused by pump pressure pulsations so to check for this problem overlay the pressure trace or pressure chromatogram because you will can acquire both the absorbance chromatogram as well as the pressure chromatogram so acquire the pressure chromatogram and overlay it with the baseline of a blank injection and see if there is any correlation between both of them pressure pulsations are typically due to leaking pump seals or worn or scratched pistons 
it can also be because of the check wall problems but may also be caused by poorly degassed solvent or bubbles trapped within the pump so use degassed mobile phase uh, or mobile phase containing minimum salt because the salt is going to deteriorate your pump seal so try to avoid the uh, uh, salt as much as possible and also don't forget to use seal wash during the analysis because seal wash is the solvent uh, which can be given to clean the uh, pump seal uh, while run is in the progress now this seal wash can also avoid the precipitation of salt and hence the health of seal wash and entire pump can be maintained very well so the for using the uh, i mean for seal wash you must use the solvent wherein your mobile phase constituent which is going to be a majorly salt must be soluble as majority of the salts are soluble in the water it's a good idea to have a seal wash as the near to 90 percent aqueous solution and 10 percent can be your another organic solvent the second point is contaminated mobile phase so contaminated mobile phase can also cause baseline problems so use freshly prepared mobile phase as much as possible or validate the usage period of the mobile phase during maybe your method validation so if you use buffer salts or additives uh, such as tfa or triethylamine use only hplc grade chemicals and replace the mobile phase very frequently discard any buffer solutions that are held at room temperature let us say for around two days especially if they are near neutral ph why because this buffer solvent solu buffers favors microbial growth so byproducts from bacterial or algal growth can also produce ghost peaks or baseline problems to your chromatogram so filter the aqueous mobile phase and look for evidence of bacterial and algal growth by the coloration of the inline filter or the, from the appearance of the mobile phase so you can make it out from the appearance of the mobile phase whether there is a growth uh, or there is a microbial growth happened or not if such micro growth occurs rinse the reservoirs and the hplc flow path excluding column you must remove the column and flush the entire system with water followed by isopropyl alcohol and then again with the water you can also use the hot water for the efficiency of the cleaning replace the inline filters with new ones the third point when it comes to pump is the inadequate mixing during the gradient generation see inadequate mixing during gradient generation or even isocratic uh, blending can cause periodic fluctuations of the baseline insufficient mixing creates a big problem with uh, the presence of modifiers like uh, tfa or ta and in case if you are only using these modifiers in the aqueous mobile phase and not into the organic mobile phase then the pulsation or the baseline fluctuations is more so add enough of this modifier to both the mobile phases to balance out the absorptivity differences be aware that the same amount of modifier in an aqueous solution may not give the same absorptivity in an organic solution a good example is let us say you are using triphoroacetic acid into a aqueous mobile phase and you have another mobile phase which is 100 percent acn mobile phase a containing aqueous solution of 0.1 percent tfa and mobile phase b is 100 percent uh, astronitride so in this case uh, the uv spectrum of tfa in water is completely different from the EV spectrum of TFA in acetonitrile. TFA gives more absorbance when ACN is used as a diluent. 
So you stay fee in astronautile at about let us say 80 to 85 percentage of the amount used in the water. Insufficient mixing can also create a big problem when there is a significant imbalance in the UV absorbance of the mobile phase components. Let us talk about the point number three where the column and column temperature. The first one is trapped impurities inside the column. So column related problems can also cause baseline fluctuations. Impurities from samples or even mobile phase can get trapped inside the column or at the column frit and eventually leach out causing ghost peaks or negative peaks or a wandering baseline or a drip in the baseline. Now these symptoms can occur in addition to poor peak shape. You must have seen that in case of this column dripped get choked with the salt precipitation your peak shape also can get deteriorated. So follow the column manufacturer's recommendation to clean the column or in case if it is not possible to clean the column you can replace it with the another column. The reverse washing of the column can help you to remove the frit contamination very effectively. However, before doing this, please refer your column manufacturer's guidance. The second point is change in refractive index due to difference in column and flow cell temperature. See another possible cause of baseline noise or wandering is a refractive index difference or refractive index change due to temperature difference between the column and flow cell. Now I'm talking about the refractive index of the solvent passing through the flow cell. And this refractive index of solvent can change because of temperature because we know that temperature has the direct impact onto the refractive index of any given solvent. If the column temperature is more than, let us say, 20 degrees Celsius above the ambient, for example, 50 degrees Celsius, then you must consider using a thermostat or column oven to maintain the temperature of the mobile phase that get exit from the column uh, and then is going to enter inside the uh, flow cell with the as much as flow temperature possible. You can also think of using the thermostat for the flow cell also. So there are manufacturers available where you will get the uh, thermostat for the detector so that you can maintain the temperature of the flow cell too. So the, the low is the temperature difference between the uh, solvent coming inside the flow cell and the flow cell itself, lower will be the impact because of this refractive, inde uh, refractive index change. The third point is column bleeding, right? So on rare occasions, which is not much been seen, but you cannot neglect that. On rare occasions, the bleeding or leaking of silica from the column can occur and this can cause the baseline disturbance. As you wash the column, right, to confirm whether your column is bleeding or not, you wash the column with the solvent and collect this eluent in a small clean glass beaker and observe whether there is any traces of silica particles into it. The fourth point is the UV cutoff detection wavelength and the sampling point or the sampling rate. It's not a sampling point, but the sampling rate. And I will explain all these three important points in the coming presentation. The first, let us talk about the mobile phase with the high UV cutoff. So the mobile phase containing solvents and solvent and salt with high UV cutoff values can increase the baseline noise. What is meant by UV cutoff? The UV cutoff is the absorbance value near about 0.5 absorbance unit. So that wavelength is called as the UV cutoff of that particular salt or the solvent. For example, the UV cutoff of ACN is around 200 nanometer or even lesser than that. 
that indicates that the ACN gives the absorbance of around 0.5 AU at 200 nanometer. So usage of UV cutoff uh, or the usage of high UV cutoff uh, solvents such as THF or salt such as citrate salt should be avoided wherever possible. Because the more is the UV cutoff, you will get the more amount of noise. So use HPL cigarette solvent. It's also very important to which grade of solvent and salt you are using. Because it has been seen that if you use the secondary grade salt or solvent, that can increase your baseline noise. So the underlying message is your UV cutoff of mobile phase should be lower than the detection wavelength. So I give the example over here. For example, if you measure the UV cutoff of your mobile phase and it is found to be 210 nanometer. So you can use this mobile phase with the detection wavelength greater than 210 nanometer. For example, the, if the detection wavelength is let us say 220 nanometer or 230 nanometer, then the wavelength uh, or then the mobile phase with UV cutoff of 210 nanometer is well acceptable. The second point is about the low wavelength detection. Now this is about the UV detection technique where you are going to select your uh, wavelength of detection. So in uh, UV detection, the lower wavelength results in more noise. You must have seen that. So wherever possible, the selection of a higher wavelength can be selected because it reduces the baseline noise. The higher wavelength generates the lower noise as compared to the lower wavelength. For example, if the compound has a lambda max at 210 nanometer and 250 nanometer, preferably use 250 nanometer as the detection wavelength where you are going to get the lesser noise as compared to 210 nanometer. This will result in much lower noise and your baseline will be smooth. The another, the third important point is the higher sampling rate. So the sampling rate is nothing but the number of data points collected per second. So if higher is the sampling rate, more will be the data points collected. And these data points are used to build the peak curvature so sampling rate is very important to confirm the adequacy in terms of building the appropriate peak. Otherwise, you may end up getting the insufficient data points, which will result into the inappropriate peak building. The too low or too high number of data point is not a good situation. The too low sampling rate will result in a lower point to build a peak. Similarly, too high sampling rate will result in noisy baseline. Generally, the sampling rate of 1 to 2 is good enough for HPLC and about 5 is good, about, is good for UPLC analysis. So if you follow good liquid chromatography practices, you can avoid many of the problems that lead to unstable baselines. Taking proper precautions will ensure higher overall performance and save significant time. I hope this presentation is certainly going to help you to minimize the baseline noise during HPLC analysis. Thank you so much.